So today I'm going to make a solid tool post riser. The purpose of that is to replace the compound slide and improve the rigidity of the whole setup uh, and then hopefully allow better performance, especially in harder materials and so on. We modified the um, compound basically because it was just a little bit too high and it prevented my tool holder from swinging around like this uh, because I had to drop the tool post so low that it would clash, clash with the um, top of the top slide. So having done that, I've now got full rotation of the quick change tool post uh, on the top slide um, and it gives me a reference height um, so I can design my rigid tool post riser. So I had a pile of these um, steel plates lying around from a, an old job. I thought I could use them to fabricate the solid tool post riser. So this is the rough idea, um, got our end plate there, notched out this one, that'll sit in there, and then a top plate sits in this groove that I've just done. The extra relief there is just to get the weld to penetrate a bit deeper. I've got the base plate, um, got some ears that go around the outside for bolting it down. Um, the main structure is here, um, there'll be a post which I'm going to have to turn appropriately to fit the um, bore in the tool post So that's um, welded up, needs a lot of clean up, but uh, unfortunately it's um, turned into a bit of a banana, so I'm going to put it in the press and see if I can uh, make it vaguely flat again. now a fair bit straighter looking um, and the top bit now fits back in which it didn't before so that is good That's both sides done. I didn't film the other side because um, I could barely see what was going on, let alone get the camera in there. Um, I had to do that now because once I weld the top on, I won't be able to get in there because it'll be underneath the top. 
So the top's fully welded, I've gone underneath as well, it's not very pretty under there, but you don't need to see that. Uh, so now I'm just going to um, stick these buttresses on. This um, face mill just throws chips everywhere, so I'm going to be putting the plastic sheet around it just to protect me from pop chips. Unfortunately, that means that you won't be able to see anything, so I will bring you back when there's less material on this. That's the aftermath. It's, um, it's come out pretty smooth. Um, barely perceptible join between the passes there. I'm going to lap it on a plate um, to get a nice flat finish. So I'm going to depth micrometer with um, a 50mm extension bar on it. I'm expecting these depths to be 56-57ish millimetres, something like that. Right, so I'm going to call that 56.0 Nine. And this one is taller by fifty seven point seven eight. So that's one point seven millimeters that we've got to take off. That's less than I thought I was gonna to have to. So I finished skimming that pretty much. Um a got probably about 0.1 of a millimetre left to take off. So what I'm going to try doing is, this is a three insert cutter. I was going to take two out and leave the one in. Just treat it like a fly cutter, see if I get an, a better finish. Is that any better? Mm, maybe a tiny bit? Not a lot. very tight fit there we go it's the right size now
tool post on the lathe, um, and as you just heard, I think it's actually worse. Basically, when you take in a cut and hard material, this is EN8, the machine sort of vibrates, um, you get a lot of chatter. And I thought that was because of the flex in the compound tool post, and especially when parting and stuff, I could actually see the thing dipping. I'm starting to think now that that was almost damping out this vibration because it seems that this rigid tool post seems to trigger that vibration a lot easier than the um, than the previous setup did. So I started looking into it. I've taken the spindle apart, um, cleaned and regreased the bearings. They don't look too bad. There's a V-belt back here, which is quite small. You know, it's, it's the size of your little finger. It's not very wide. Um, I'm, I was wondering whether that was slipping. The old one had some sort of scars on it, so I replaced that, cleaned it all up, and um, it hasn't made a lot of difference. Um, I even um, adjusted the mounting point for the motor so because I had a bit too much tension on this timing belt um, and a bit too little on here. I've now got lots of tension on here and um, a lot less on the timing belt, so which is the right way around. So this is definitely not slipping when it's making that noise. So my question is, where do I go from here? Obviously I want to damp that noise down. Taking a step back, it's obviously not an issue in aluminium, uh, free cutting steel, that kind of stuff. It, it's the harder material, stainless um, and uh, the hardenable steels that seem to be a problem. There is a cavity behind this metal plate where the spindle runs could fill that with epoxy granite maybe. The stand is obviously just sheet metal. I have been planning for a long time to make a welded steel frame for this out of box section. Would that extra mass help damp that ringing out? Or is it just some fundamental limitation of the size of the lathe? I would be interested to know what you think on that one. So I don't really know what else to say there other than um, thanks for watching and sorry it's taken so long to get this video out. Hopefully the next one won't take quite so long.